What's not to watch? They're the best at what they do, and I'm the best at what I do, and together it's like, it's on. In case some of you wonder who the best is, they're up here on this plaque on the wall. You sure you're ready for this? I'll do my best. Your best? Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and f*** the prom queen. We are live on the best soccer show, boys and girls. Jason Davis, Joe Dubois, Wednesday night, live. I said live already, but live. It is. Uh, it adds more flavor. It is the last show of the year, right? Right? I got that right. Right? Yes. The last show of 2011. Guess what? We don't have for the people. We don't have a a wrap up of the year or a top 10 list or a review of the highlights and low lights a little bit hacky isn't we it? don't have any of that we don't have we didn't make a Let's list of our work. favorite we players yeah <laughs> is that what it is it's down to the fact that it's work and we don't feel like doing work at the end of the year i had last week off before christmas i'm still coming out of like idle i'm not even completely back to full speed i'm gonna be back to full speed tonight i'm promising that how much weight did you gain over the holiday, I didn't. Oh, yeah. I don't think I gained a lot. I didn't do. What's your vice? What's your holiday food vice? Um, wow. Um, I, it's nothing sweet. I I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Green bean casserole. I mean, something stupid like that. I just it's the only time I, mean, I have that's it. The most, that's the most uninteresting like I, guilty I love, food I, pleasure but ever. I, but I'm not that guy. Like I I will like if you put something if there's something there I'll probably eat it. But I don't go seeking things out, and I certainly don't like. I don't every have every like, year in my stocking. I get a plethora of Reeses, and it just <laughs> destroys me. Yeah, it's my kryptonite, dude. Yeah. So okay, but do you do you ever like get an urge and go out and buy them? Yourself, I, if I'm being honest, yes. Okay, see, that's the thing. Like, I, I will, uh, I but will. But the holidays give me like free license because they were <laughs> not a free. Li- well, okay, if you don't eat them, then you're a bad. Yeah, you're, you're not. Yeah, I, I got to be a good host. <laughs> it's not about being a host. It's about accepting a gift. Uh, live tonight on this show is Alexi Lawless. In the second segment, we're going to talk to Alex. I got a, a lot of topics that we can touch on uh, with Alexi Lawless, and he's never been on the Best Soccer Show, so this will be his debut appearance on this show. I'm excited. We should also about mention that. another debut. You'll get it tomorrow. Uh, my boy Jason Davis here interviewed Jeff Cameron shortly before our recording tonight, and we will have that out tomorrow for you. Talking all sorts of stuff: Houston Dynamo, MLS, Brian Ching, it Camp would be, Strudel. It would be all wrong. Sorts of stuff. It would be wrong if I had Jeff Cameron on the phone and we didn't talk about the Houston Dynamo. That would be weird, right? <laughs> It'd be kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about Brian Ching. We talked about the stadium. There's a. It's a good interview. I hope you guys uh enjoy it when it's out. All right, look, the thing that happened uh, in the last seven days since we last did a show, we, you know, Christmas happened on a Sunday. That, that meant we didn't do a show on Sunday. So, and I'm glad, I'm glad for this reason, Jared. It's, it's really the dead time. There's not a lot happening. It's all rumors and nonsense. And the only thing we have to How? talk about <laughs> is this, this no, camp roster. No, the only thing we had to talk about is this, this uh, Camp Strudel, Camp Cupcake roster. And, and I think that's what we're going to have to lead with. I mean, are you really saying that's the only thing there's to talk about? No, no, no. The are... best thing ever happened today. But what? we're gonna save it, I think, for a, for a little bit later when Alexi's on the show. But oh, that. the best thing that could ever happen today happened. Uh, Preston Zimmerman is God's gift. Okay. To this show. All right. All right. We will talk about Preston Zimmer. You're right. That 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 did pop, but that's not substan. I mean, okay. It's a good debate to have. And and anybody who doesn't know what happened with Preston Zimmerman on Twitter today, you'll find out. Just stick around. We're gonna talk. We we might bring that up with Alexi too. Um. Uh, but but it's not real. It's not soccer news. It's not so and so was signed. It's not L.A. You know yeah. Beckham signed with P.S. Not that that's a giant deal for a lot that's of like people. Saying TMZ isn't news. Don't wreck my universe here, Jason. <laughs> TMZ is news, right? <laughs> no, it's not. It's a bunch of cameras stuck in celebrities' faces coming out of bars. That's not news. <laughs> okay. But but I get you saying. Uh, okay, Camp Strudel. Let's get back on point here. There is a list of names. What is this? 20, 20 players. It's not a big list. That's not a big roster from Jurgen Klinsmann. What's the deal with the, the smallish number, Jerry? From, from what we're hearing is that uh, they're probably going to insert some guys from the under-23 roster. 
uh, to try to round it out where they need it. And they'll be combined. Uh, the, the two the two camps will be uh, combined, right? Is that is that do I have that right? There will be a U twenty three camp like right alongside. Some kind of, some kind of uh, correlation there right. between the two, and you'll probably see the the top echelon players, the cream of the crop, from the under twenty threes. Uh, see a lot of time. I don't know if you're gonna see a lot of U twenty three defenders coming into this uh, camp because it seems like a plethora of if, defenders if there, here. If there's anything that is the the eye is on one position in this uh, Camp Strudel uh, roster. It's the defense, right? I, I would think so. I mean, you've got the guys we've all been calling for, right? Uh, uh, Jeff Cameron, the aforementioned Jeff Cameron, uh, is in this team. Omar Gonzalez is in this. Uh, George John is here. And then guys like Zach Lloyd, Michael Parkhurst, who we've been calling for. Uh, Heath Pierce. Uh, let's see, who else am I missing? Is that everybody? L AJ De La Garza, your, your boy out there. Uh, in nice. LA. Very surprised yeah, call up there. Maybe we should start there. What are your surprises here? I mean, I can read down the list, but I th I'm pretty sure everyone's seen it. Go U.S. soccer, go uh, search two it, whatever. Guys for me, two guys stand out to me as surprises. Okay. A.J. De La Garza, not that it's not necessarily unwarranted, was the center back pairing on the best defense in the league this year. He's but just a fun still size. He's a fun size a center back, though. <laughs> that's the thing that's funny to me. <laughs> is he going to play center back, though? Is that? Right. I mean, I don't know. Let's be honest here. The, right. the, the left back position is not necessarily locked in. A.J. could probably try anywhere. He, but he could play the a lot other of places. surprise to me, Graham Zuzzi, and I okay. love this pickup. Okay, that I think that's a pleasant surprise, right? I think everybody's oh, excited to see Graham because of of all the guys. Look, okay, you know, you, I'd have to come up with a list and rank them, but of all the guys who who on the strength of their MLS season deserved a shot in this camp, I, I think Graham Zuzzi has to be in your top three. At the least, yep. maybe he's the top uh, guy. Uh, maybe he's number one. I mean, besides Omar Gonzalez, and and we knew that was coming eventually. But, but here's what I like about here's what I like about Zuzi as opposed to a lot of the other center midfielders in the entire pool, not just this roster, but in the entire pool, is that there seems to be a lot of defensive midfielders that we shoe into two way midfielders. Where okay. the only real two way uh, two way midfielders we have are probably Stuart Holden, right? And uh, maybe Jermaine Jones, and no. Graham Zuzi is a true two way okay. center midfielder. Yeah, Jermaine Jones is not a two way midfielder. Jermaine Jones can hit a pass on occasion, but he's not a two-way midfielder. Yeah, I agree. I think that but it's a pretty steep drop we, off after Stu Holden. We in talk terms about of that, right. Yeah, we talk about the depth of the of the U.S. midfield, and we say depth just because there are a lot of guys that are in roughly the same uh, quality level. It's not like there's superstars jumping out. I mean, Michael Bradley is probably uh, uh, top of my list, maybe not top of Jurgen Klinsmann's list, and. But but after that, it, it, it's kind of a, a, a morass of either guys that, that play D-mid and aren't going to give you much in the attack. And there's a lot of those guys. And so you can pretty much say, all right, well, is it Marisa Du today? Is it Kyle Beckerman today? We know how Klinsman loves Beckerman. Uh, there's not a lot of guys that are, you're like, okay, we can stick them in here and they can do a little bit of work on both ends. And and to the other extreme, Benny Failhaber, who's in this camp, is a guy who, who hasn't done much on defense but we know can play uh, can can uh, play good attacking Great soccer. So ball. yeah. So I mean, if you want to try to find a guy that can bridge the gap, especially with this this high pressure system that that Klinsman wants to put in place and is still trying to work out, then maybe Zussi is a guy that can. You know, I don't know if he's a a, a world beater. He's going to set the the world on fire necessarily, but he can. But he's earned this. this certainly earned this, without spot. a doubt. And that's what this camp is supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be for guys that are that that deserve a shot, that are out of season. That's what it's been for the last couple of years. It seems to be what Klinsman has done here. The guy that surprised me, and and you talk about Zusi being a, a pleasant surprise. The guy that surprised me is. Um, I'm, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. Ricardo Clark. Where did that come from? Why is Ricardo Clark? Hey, talk about defensive midfielders. Where is Ricardo Clark coming from? Why is he in this one of team? The, one of the few foreign players called into this camp. You got to think base. that. Yeah, and because I'm he sorry? doesn't have a job, is I mean, he does. Is he not? He's not playing anywhere. So that explains why he's did available. Did I read that for this. he's the fifth highest? played u.s national team player oh no sorry it was in mls when he was here i apologize he was the fifth most uh, highest played u.s player in the mls at the time before he left that's just shocking to me but the, it, it, he is kind of it seems like he's fallen out of favor at uh, on track for frankfurt and on his way out the needs door to either find a, a way out in this in this window here in january or be maybe fall into uh i, I want to say obscurity when it comes to the u.s yeah, camp yeah so you so don't Clemson is definitely giving him the opportunity i don't here. think anybody would lose any sleep over ricardo clark falling into obscurity i i don't i i don't unless this is Klinsman doing clark a favor as a means to jumpstart him to somewhere else i mean i don't know but if eddie johnson can find a job in mexico there's no reason to believe ricardo clark can't find a job somewhere wow you've brought ricardo clark down to eddie johnson <laughs> no level. i'm not no no he's definitely not 
He's definitely not. He's been a much better national team player than Eddie Johnson ever was and probably ever will be. I'm just, just like saying. You on spot. I'm just saying in terms of guys that are in limbo that don't have a defined play. Where are they playing? What club are they? That he's not getting any any club minutes. Why is he getting a look in the national team? Even in this camp, even in this camp that's supposed to be for guys that are on the bubble or haven't gotten their shot yet or or need to work back into the mix. And I, I don't I know Clark can't. I mean, really, looking back just a year and a half ago at the World Cup roster, there's only one other player that's fallen off the face like Ricardo Clark has of the national team. And that's Robbie Finley. And I think Robbie Finley is like really dropped off. And you got <laughs> maybe Ricardo Clark just yeah, above but, that, and, right? and look, and Robbie Finley is not tearing up the championship. And I don't think he's starting for force, but he is at least getting on the field. What is I, I, I mean, I don't I don't have it in front of me, but I, I haven't heard Ricardo Clark's name mentioned in the playing context in months. If that. Yeah. So I, that, that that's the one that surprised me. I think overall there are very few, uh, very few things you could argue with in this group. There's a lot Listen, of good the, here. Camp Strudel is Camp Strudel is like when you go away for your anniversary. It's the time you try weird things. <laughs> you know, like right. you'll try some pairings, you'll try right. some things out you haven't done before. Yeah, but take what, some risks. Just what happen? What happens if if there's you know wax involved and somebody gets burned and then there's hurt feelings? You don't want any of that. See, that's that's the that's pro- okay. That's, that's you why have, you do it when you're away from home. That's what you have but, to avoid. What, wait, wait, because you get home and everything's all better. It's all. Uh, I'm so sorry <laughs> that. You know, I, I, I drew blood. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's what I want to ask you. In terms of, uh, obviously, the, the center back and defensive uh, a pool of this, a part of this pool okay. is where everyone's eyes are going to be. Right. Do you want to see players like the, the, the people we're talking about, the Omar Gonzalez and the uh, George Johns and the Jeff Camerons paired together, the kind of known guys that are in those top three, top four positions? Or do you want to see them thrown in with one of the wild cards, like an A.J. De La Garza in the back? <sighs> and, or, or What do you want to see? You know, that that's why I'm going to say that I, I like this roster, because there are so many different things that Klinsman can do that I'm excited to see. I know I'm not going to be able to see them all, but there is some, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing De La Garza, uh, you know, paired with somebody like uh, like Jeff Cameron or something like that. I mean, I, there are a lot of various permutations in this team that get you excited. See Jess Upong, I'd like to see him on the field. Uh, you know, I want to see Graham Zussi. We can't. We're not going to talk about Graham Zussi and him earning this shot and not want to see him get into a game. So it's I more about just being a Klinsman style player too. I really think Zuzi fits into what Klinsman wants to do. So I think you're definitely going to see uh, Zuzi somewhere in this lineup. Uh, outside of that, maybe are you still a little bit surprised at Zach Lloyd. Am I surprised? I mean, I think he's a talented kid. I don't know that he's. Uh, you know, I, who else are you going to bring? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I hate to be the L.A. guy, but is Sean Franklin more deserving than Zach Lloyd? Probably. Probably. And that's that's I think that's one of the omissions that you could talk about. The other one is Tim Ream. And uh, there are a uh, lot of I think that's there's reason behind that. OK, well, that's maybe that's we've got about uh, two minutes left here. Maybe we should touch that real quick. It, first of all, Tim Ream's getting married in the very beginning of the first week of the year. That was pushed out there as a possible reason for him not being included in this camp, but it turns out yeah, Benny, he's getting married. He's getting yeah, married but, to England. But Barry, uh, Benny Failhaber is also getting married in the same general time frame. So if Benny Failhaber can be in this camp and get married, why can't Tim Ream be in this camp and get married? So uh, maybe Tim Ream is on his way out the door. And the the rumors have popped up. Uh, you know, there's there's just kind of a, a, a an undercurrent that this is starting to get some legs. Tim Ream to Bolton to uh, take the place of Gary Cahill, started, who looks like started he's... started with West Brom. It's kind of evolved into Bolton, and you can believe the Bolton deal because it's pretty obvious that Bolton's looking to maybe sell uh, Cahill to make some money. Right. Let, he may be on the way out. You're going to have to try to find some depth there at, uh, at the center half. There's been a little bit of a range in terms of the, the numbers bandied around, and I don't put a lot of stock into them. I've seen 1.5 million pounds. I've seen 2.5 million pounds. I, I don't know. I think either way that's probably a, well, 1.5 is definitely a steal for Bolton in my opinion. I'm, I'm a ream booster, but Two point five. Seems eh, low. I, yeah, definitely seems low. I, look, I, th- th- I, that's why it's weird that he's not in this camp because the the marriage thing doesn't excuse it, considering the fact that Benny Failhaber is also getting married. Unless it's a honeymoon thing, and then it's like, are you really going to skip this camp because you're on your honeymoon? Can't you push that back a week or two? You must have a very understanding wife. I mean, yeah, and look, the MLS camps are can open as early as January fifteenth. Uh, if if I don't know, there's a lot of things to consider here. And it begins to look like Tim Ree might be on his way out. I, I wanted to talk about 
this this roster though. We've got about thirty seconds. Is there anything else that jumps out of you very uh, jumps out at you very quickly? Obviously, Laurentowitz is is establishing himself as a Clemson guy. Beckerman's there. We know he's not going anywhere. Uh, outside of that, not so much. I think it's a lot of the players you're expecting to see. Maybe Wondolowski is a bit on the older side for what you expect to see in this camp, but he's in the right, I think, uh, right. in the right uh, tier to fall into this camp. Well, I, a I guy like, that maybe hasn't proved himself at the full national level I, I that like, much. I but... like Wando in this. we we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Alexi Lawless on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Best soccer show. I don't think I can make you any more times. Back on the best soccer show, North American Soccer Network, live on a Wednesday evening. What's today? January to December, blah, 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 blah. December 28th. 28th. Right. 2011, last show. Uh, Alexi Lawless joining us on our last show of 2011. How are you, Alexi? I'm good, gentlemen. How are we doing? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's the end of the year. This is when uh, we, we mentioned it in the top. This is when you do your, your year-in roundups and your lists and your best ofs, and we didn't do any of those, so we're good. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, I was listening to the show, uh, you know, from the start. Uh, and uh, first, uh, first things first. This is my first time on the show, and I want to congratulate you on your success already with the show. It's it's fun listening. Uh, I enjoy listening to it, and now it's a pleasure to be a guest on the show. Oh, so well, onward and upward for 2012. I think that that's going to take segue Thank segue you, us straight into uh, something we have on our list, and that's the shot. That's your daily podcast. Is that what it is? <laughs> This is this is yeah, Alexi yeah, Lawless. Yeah. I mean, you, look, you guys can relate to the fact that uh, you know we we live in a world here when we're, we're talking about soccer where so much happens, even in down times. And uh, you know, I, I get my opportunities to talk about it, but there's also a lot of times where uh, I want to say something. Uh, but you know, you guys are are very very good at the at the long form version. So I'm, I'm doing a mini pod <laughs> every day. It's called the Shot. You can check it out on iTunes and and Buzzsprout, and uh, it's the Shot with Alexi Lawless. You can look it up. It's basically Two minutes out of your day. Uh, it is a shot of soccer, and I go through uh, three different topics, two soccer, one music, of whatever is uh, going on in the world uh, of soccer and music, whatever uh, I think is uh, is interesting. Well, i, I got to tell you, it's the best-sounding podcast around. It's, it's so professionally put together, Alexi. It's like... <laughs> It makes this sound like amateurs. The it's guy has a music studio in uh, his house. It should <laughs> sound good, right? Right. That's it. That's it, right? Yeah, I think I, I, I got a feel I'm one of the few podcasters out there that puts it together on Pro Tools. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just a, a, a situation where I got the technical abilities at home. I'm actually on the road right now, so I've been doing uh, the, the satellite uh, mini podcast shot uh, <laughs> off of my computer. So, wow. Uh, but it's fun. It's a, it's, a, it's a good time, and I'm glad that people are uh, discovering it and listening to it. And uh, it's still a work in progress as all of these pods are, like you know. Okay, you, you you said that things happen, you know, even in the down times. Well, one of those things that happened in the down times happened today, and it happened on Twitter. Uh, Preston Zimmerman, who's been in some uh, youth international teams for the U.S. and is now in the third division in Germany, decided he was going to pop off about the Americanness of the U.S. national team, and he related a story about a a, a German American kid who couldn't respond in English to a fan or something. It, it was. It was interesting, and it started a lot of conversation. I, I know you saw it, and maybe you didn't know who Preston Zimmerman was. Did you know who Preston Zimmerman was before this? Uh, I, I would be lying if I told you that, that I did. I mean, I, I vaguely have a, rec a recollection of his name, but, uh, you know, the, the, I guess in that sense, uh, you know, if you wanted to uh, attract attention, uh, you certainly did, because I had to go look him up and find out about him. And, and look, you know, he, he's a, a young kid. Um, you know, I, if he had any aspirations to be with the national team, uh, today probably wasn't his, his best moment <laughs> in, in terms of getting an invite. Um, I don't, I don't agree with with what he said. And when you start talking about you know real Americans and, and that type of stuff, uh, you, you get into trouble, as you should, because the reality is, for me, having played on the national team. Um, I don't care, honestly, if you can speak the language. I don't care if you grew up in the country. What I do care about, uh, and what I would say with, with regards to this discussion, is that I do want people that have a respect for the country, have a respect for our history, and have and have an appreciation for putting on that jersey. And that's not just a job. Um, that That is something that's important. But to say that you have to have 
grown up in the country or you have to speak the language. I, I, I just don't agree. But I, but I also wouldn't agree that it is simply about getting the best team uh, and winning. I do believe that in order to win and in order to have the best team, you have to have players that respect the United States. And if they don't, at a certain point, that will manifest itself either on and off the field, and that will be detrimental to the team. Alexi, you played in the 90s with Thomas Dooley, a German-American that uh, came over and showed very well for uh, for the United States. Was there any backlash? Was there any like adjustment period that went on with a player like that that came over? Because he kind of was a, he and David Regie in the 90s really kind of set that first tone of foreigners coming in uh, and being <laughs> right coming right into the national team camp. Yeah, it's how you handle yourself. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, you know, it was all just, uh, you know, uh, doors wide open. Uh, you know, there was, a, there was an adjustment period as these players came in. But like I said before, it became readily apparent, whether it was a Thomas Dooley or an Ernie Stewart or, or any of these players that had different backgrounds than, say, the traditional ones uh, from American soccer, that they loved the country as much as anybody. And they became a part not only of the team, but a part of the soccer community and, and has continued to be a part of that soccer community. So uh, it took a short period of time of adjustment. And once we found out that uh, not only were they respectful of, uh, of the country that they were representing and their country, by the way, mm -hmm. but they were also damn good soccer players. And that really is also an important uh, component because if a player comes in with what are we what, let's call it an alternative background if you will um, <laughs> and they're and they're not and they're not good that's when that's when you start running running right. into problems right. um, but you know I think that Jurgen Klinsmann is doing what exactly what he should in terms of leaving no stone unturned for players that can possibly represent the, the, the U.S. and help him do his job correctly, which is to get this team to win. And I think as he goes along, some of those players will work out on the field in terms of their playing. Some of them might be okay playing, but they don't work out in terms of those other things that we've talked about right. uh, early. Okay, so, so you, you got a point about, you know, guys wanting to play for the U.S. and, and want, you know, having respect for it and, and, and all of those things. Who makes those decisions, though? You've got a, you know, is it a German slash American coach now? But ultimately, whose responsibility is to, to look these guys in the eye and say, OK, I buy that he wants to be here. I buy that he wants to that he feels American enough or, or you want to go down that road. Just feels like he, sh he wants to, you know, compete for this team. How do you who gets to make that decision, Alexi? Well, ultimately, it's Jurgen, and I think that if you look at Jurgen's background, I think that that is very telling. You know, with what he has done and the appreciation and the respect uh, that he has for the United States, for the culture, and for the for the history, and making his life in the United States, and now obviously representing. And, and look, just because Jurgen Klinsmann represented Germany at the international level doesn't mean that he can't understand and it doesn't translate to representing the United States as the coach. So he's going to see these players. He's going to see what they are on the field and how they fit in. And not just how they fit in in terms of kicking the ball, but how they fit in in the group. And I, I go back to, you know, a Thomas Dooley. I mean, I had some incredible nights with Thomas Dooley or Ernie Stewart, uh, <laughs> you know, out, out, that had nothing to do with soccer. But I can only awesome imagine. Nights. And, and I can tell you right now, they were as American as nights as possible. But also, <laughs> it's important to understand that they brought a different way of thinking. Uh, and, and a good, they, they injected something good in the national team. Right. And they injected something that, look, it's what America is all about. America's changing. It's all these different types of people coming together. So it should be represented uh, on the soccer field I, in that way. I hope those nights ended up in uh, swaying and, and sing-alongs. I hope that's how those nights ended. <laughs> Well, I tell people all the night, uh, all the time, that if Twitter were around and camera phones, I mean, my <laughs> career would have lasted about three weeks. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that because that was something we were going to ask you about. Is that you played at an age before Twitter and before this, uh, how players can just interact with their fan bases so intimately? Is it a danger, maybe, to have so uh, to have that exposure? And are these athletes today? Are they all getting like schooled in how to do this? And if so, did Preston Zimmerman fail? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in a certain way, you know, you're giving some very young kids and some very naive and, and inexperienced kids uh, a, a loaded gun, and you're gonna have to figure out that it can protect them, but it could also be very, very dangerous uh, in terms of what they say. Uh, having said that, I, I, I love the current state of, of social media and the interaction uh, and the 
the ability to uh, to get information. As far as you know, if I if I was with the team, I, I would love to have players uh, on Twitter and and tweeting and explaining how they feel. And I'm always one that that believes that having personalities and characters and opinions is a good thing, even if I don't necessarily agree to it. And I always told the players when I was with the team, both as a player and as, as a GM, uh, you know, what you read in the paper, uh, if you're going to take that seriously, uh, then you're going to have problems. Mm-hmm. And if I have a problem with you, I will look you in the eye and I will tell you personally. But all the other stuff, all the entertainment, um, you know, I love that part about sports and I love the entertainment part, whether it's, uh, you know, the, 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 the traditional media or the non-traditional media. I, I love having that. I love how players who are embracing that. Uh, there's a group of guys that are uh, getting together for a camp next month. I don't think I don't think Preston Zimmering can take issue with any of them. Give us your impressions on on this roster that Klinsman's called in. What this first uh, instant of the ja- instance of the January camp for Klinsman, what he needs to accomplish, and what do you think he will accomplish here? Well, I mean, I think the first thing that a lot of people have already pointed to is that it's a smaller group, so. Uh, what the camp has been in the past might not be what the camp is now going forward under Jurgen Klinsmann. And, you know, these are things that we have to learn in terms of how he views these types of situations that might have been traditionally run one way. So it's a smaller group, so he'll have his eyes on these players um, in a much more concise type of way. I mean, I think that I don't think he has is, he is bowed or acquiesced to anybody in terms of the players that he's brought in. I think it's a logical progression, whether you're talking about an Omar Gonzalez or a Jeff Cameron uh, or a George John in the back, which I think a lot of people are going to look to. Uh, and uh, and then, you know, some, some interesting things, whether it's, uh, you know, a Graham Zuzzi or a Zach Lloyd or a C.J. Sapong, you know, these types of players. I think that Jurgen Klinsmann um, will give players an opportunity and will give players a chance. But just, just like any coach, he needs to see them. He needs to see them in this type of situation. So I'm excited to see what happens. I would caution people, though, that if, if for instance, uh, Omar Gonzalez happens to, you know, go out and, and play great. It, it doesn't mean that he is automatically the answer. Um, <laughs> but this will be the start of that assessment. And, and I've said before, there are players that are very, very good players uh, at the club level. And sometimes when they get to the international level, there's three, three categories. The ones that get to the international level and don't miss a beat, and they're off and running and not a problem. There's other ones that take a little bit of time, and we're talking about maybe a Breck Shea. They take a little time to figure out, but eventually they do. And there's other ones that, you know what? They might be incredible club players, but it just doesn't translate to the international level. It doesn't mean they're not good players. And at a certain point in the U.S., we're going to have to you know, wrap, our, wrap our minds around the fact that there might be some very good players that just don't fit in. And that's, that's okay. We don't have to force every single good player out there into the national team setup. Lexi, two questions regarding this uh, the the camp roster here. One, who is your favorite player that got picked up? Like, which one? He said, like, oh, yeah, I'm glad I saw that guy come in. And then two, who's got the most to prove out of any player here? Um, Zach Lloyd, I really like. Uh, I think he is a player that you can say do this job and he will do it consistently. And any coach will tell you that, the players that go up and down are the players that are most frustrating. But the guys that you just consistently can say, this guy is going to do this at this level for me game in and game out. I'm not going to get this up and down type of thing. He's that type of player. So he could uh, come in and I think do some good things for Jurgen. Uh, and the other, I think the one that has the most pressure to live up to, it's, it's Omar Gonzalez. I mean, we've been talking about this guy for the last year, what he's done in MLS, uh, but we haven't seen him, whether he's able to do it uh, at the international level, and there's a lot of pressure because of the fact that the the center back position and the defensive uh, unit for the U.S. is 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 not solidified at this point. And there's a lot of uh, people saying, "Well, this is this is the savior." Well, he may be, he may not be. We've seen what's happened with uh, with Tim Ream, and also the way that he plays and the style that he plays and the players that he play around plays a, uh, next to on a galaxy are very, very different and can be very, very different than what he experiences when he gets to the national team. So once again, is he that type of player that can immediately just change and adjust and adapt uh, to the international game? Uh, a guy that you, you mentioned there, Tim Ream, there's been a lot of rumors that, that he's going, and I don't understand the, the work permit issues here, but is, is it a good idea? I mean, I, you know, just from the outside looking at him developing as a center back, knowing center backs as you do, is it a good idea for him to, to jump this, the pond right now? 
Um, yeah, I think so. I think wow. if if the opportunity to go, it, it's good for him. You, you mentioned the work permit. You know, this is something that people just kind of uh, uh, toss aside. This, these are big things. You know, getting a work permit is not is not a uh, a slam dunk by right, any means right. for for any of these players. I mean, for Tim Ream, it would come down to if he's not going to qualify automatically, so it would come down to a situation where you're getting everybody and their mother to write uh, letters <laughs> of recommendation, and certainly a guy like uh, Jurgen Klinsmann, and maybe you know Jurgen's mother or, or whoever. Uh, is 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 writing these these letters and talking and, and pulling as many strings behind uh, behind that they possibly can, but you know you, you still got to get that work from it. If it happens, I think it would be great for for Tim Ream. I think he is, you know, to see him back at the Red Bulls after what's happened. Uh, I think it's probably good for the Red Bulls and probably good for Tim Ream if he goes on uh, and tries to do something different. Alexi, if, if Ream moves on, does that pretty much kill the Henri to Arsenal rumors about? Because how can New York survive losing Ream and then also losing Henri for two months of the season? It's not two months of the um, season. Well, yeah, it depends I mean, on you know, I, I, Yeah, Henri, I don't, know, I don't know the exact date that it would be, and you know, it's all speculation at this point, but I think that they could be fine. I mean, a lot of problems are solved in soccer with money, and uh, in MLS there's not a lot of it. But when it comes to money, uh, you, you're talking about the Galaxy and you're talking about New York in terms of their ability to spend. So, um, you know, some of those things can, can, can be spent. I think that Hans Bakke right now is looking back over the last year, and I, I would hope uh, that, that he has learned a lot of lessons and probably would do some things differently. And he's been given the opportunity to make amends for it uh, in 2012 right now. So, We'll see what he does on and off the field to, to kind of come into MLS um, maybe a little more humble and a little certainly more experienced with, uh, with what it means to be an MLS on and off the field. Uh, LA's got money. Uh, they don't know if they'll have David Beckham back. It seems to be the conventional wisdom is he's going. If he goes... Is LA is it incumbent yeah. upon LA maybe you know a, a responsibility to the league maybe or just to, to to their fan base to replace him with not somebody as big necessarily but somebody big? Oh yeah, I mean they 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 have to, uh, you know the the way that they have positioned themselves uh, over the past five years and and uh, you know I I know it well is and and I'm going to throw it out there uh, as the, the super club for. Major League Soccer, and when you are a super <laughs> ding, club, ding. you have to replace with stars, and you have to go out there and figure it out. Now, David Beckham is, is an entity unto himself, and there is nobody that, that does what David Beckham does, but there are some big players. They can spend some money, you know, whether it's a, a drug or, or these types of players that people talk about. Nobody's going to sell the tickets and generate the type of attention on and off the field that David Beckham is, but they got to do something big, and I believe they will because they've been given, you know, the the opportunity to spend uh, to spend money. But I'm also really interested to see how Bruce Arena goes about um, his business without David Beckham. And I think secretly, you won't you won't say this publicly, <laughs> that he is very excited that he is very excited about the opportunity to go and do some damage yeah. without David Beckham because uh, you know David Beckham was there when he got there, and it's not that. He didn't figure it out. Without a doubt, he did, and he deserves a tremendous amount of credit for the way that he managed that situation. But you always kind of want to do something on your own. Right. And uh, I think that he will be looking forward at a certain point uh, to having a beckham galaxy that he can guide. And it uh, doesn't mean that he's going to drive him to the airport, uh, although, you know, Landon might. I don't know. Someone, <laughs> you know, who knows, who knows what happens with the, with the folks over there. They're going to have a good team, but I think we're looking at a situation right now where the Galaxy might be a very, very different-looking Galaxy in 2012. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to be strong. Alexi, two quick questions before we get out. Two fun ones. We love 90s here. We love pop culture here. Uh, question for you first. Better 90s movie theme song. Brian Adams, Everything I Do, I Do For You, or Bon Jovi from Young Guns, Blaze of Glory. Oh, come on. There's Blaze only, of Glory. It's yeah. not even a question. There's only one answer to not that question. question. One made a lot more money. Not even a question. Other. Yeah, but, yeah, okay, so no love for okay, uh, love for Brian Adams, period, or? <laughs> oh, no, I love Brian Adams. Okay, okay. Oh, my God. I, I, you know, I go back old school with Brian Adams. As a matter of fact, years ago, I was flying through um, Miami, and I got a tap on the shoulder. I turned around, and it was Brian Adams, and he was flying to Jamaica. Wow. And, uh, you know, it was like, oh, my God, Brian Adams knows who I am. That's crazy. And not only that, you know, and I had grown up listening to Brian Adams, I mean, you know, you know even, before, uh, even before Cuts Like a Knife and all that kind of stuff. Um, he is an incredible songwriter, first and foremost. 
uh, and a great performer. And if you listen to him right now, he sounds as good as he did uh, back in the 80s. So I got a lot of love wow. for Brian Adams. But when you compare it to Blaze of Glory, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, you know, they're, they're two totally different songs. And if I'm stranded on a desert island, um, I'm sorry, but I, I just can't listen okay. to everything I do, I do for you. How about this? Which is the better movie then? Robin Hood, Prince oh. of Thieves, or, or Young Guns. Is it the original Young Guns? Is that where Blaze of Glory is this from? This is the easier one for me. Oh, yeah, it's the original one. Okay, just checking. Uh, better movie? Oh, man, I like <laughs> Robin Hood, actually. So I'd probably have to go movie Robin Hood, but theme song, Blaze of the, Glory. Uh, you heard it here first. Alexi Laos likes his, uh, his Robin Hoods with American accents. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the reason why I like it. I mean, you know, listen, if you're, you're going to do it, just right. completely make a mess of it. Don't, don't you know, half-ass it or anything. All right, Alexi, we Is appreciate it? the... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jerry. Go ahead. You're good. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the time, Alexi. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. See All you. All right, bye. All right, let's take a break. It's the best soccer show, North American Soccer Network, at ASN.TV. I don't know. What's next? How do we follow that up? Ah, stay there. We'll find out. Jason and Jerry back on the best soccer show. We are recovering from talking about Brian Adams. <laughs> I can't. I'll talk I, about his summer, summer 69, uh, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one go to, right? I don't think anything I do, I do it for you is the song most guys. That song was big. Don't even no, act it was like massive. you didn't dance to that in Junior High. You know what? I just thought of a another. another um, I mean, it's not in Alexi's wheelhouse, but another movie theme, theme song that goes right into that pantheon. And it's New Jackson. No, the Whitney Houston song from Bodyguard, which is oh, another Bodyguard. costume it movie. It went through my mind. It went through my mind, yeah. but it was so unmanly that I chose not to use it. <laughs> the movie, it the song. Enough, I was, it was bad enough everything. I was doing everything I do, I do for you. <laughs> yeah, and then I, uh, when we were talking about this before the show, I brought up, I don't even think, is Armageddon a 90s movie or is it early 2000s? I can't remember. I, it's on the cusp right there. It's yeah. kind of in between the, the two, I think. The Aerosmith song that, that was big out of that movie. Um, I can't. Did you ever pull the, after that, did you ever pull the animal cracker on a woman's stomach move? No, I, ne I never did that. I never did that. Right I, I like may, moved, although I may have done, what was the, what did he do? I forget. What did he, describe the move. He, he used the, like the cheetah or something on the Just girl, on Liv play. Tyler's stomach. Yeah, you know? okay. I may have done the uh, sugar packets from, um, what's the, what's the Tom Cruise racing movie? <laughs> Quick. Oh, the drafting move! <laughs> I may have the, done uh, the, Days of Thunder? yeah, just playing around with the sugar packets, whatever. No, Days of Thunder, not Rolling Thunder, Mister Producer. <laughs> Days of Thunder. He yeah, said yeah. Rolling Thunder. He's, He's fired. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's let's look get back into Preston Zimmerman just a little bit because I I I do have some thoughts on it. I think you probably do as well. Well, I, I don't know. Quick, I want to say that there's someone in the chat room to ask a question that, that about this that I kind of want to reference here, and that was uh, I believe it was U.S. Soccer dudes asked. Uh, does Zimmerman owe the apology, does he owe an apology to the U.S. men's national team? I don't think he has to apologize for having an opinion. Um, you know, right or wrong in this situation is is a tough thing because uh, Alexi kind of got to the heart of it. I mean, for him, it's it's good soccer players, and then there's that kind of you know subjective do they want to be here thing, and that's for Jurgen Klinsmann to to decide. I mean, ultimately, it's his job, right, to determine. Who is worthy of wearing the, the jersey? They hired, they're paying him a lot of money to do that job. So, you know, I, you don't have to trust him if you don't want to, but you're going to sleep it a lot a better at night. It is a little bit night. redneck, uh, these foreigners coming in here and taking our jobs kind of thing, isn't it? It, it is a little bit like that. It, it's a little, well, okay, I, I don't know. Preston Zimmerman, okay, first let's establish, okay, the guy is a player, and he's playing in Germany, and he's been and in. He's about in to the, get his name and build. He's been in the youth setup, and and you know, I I don't I don't know anything beyond that about the guy. Okay, I I I I may have read an interview with him uh, over at the Shin Guardian. I I know that they've had some interaction, and I'm I'm guessing there's going to be some follow up to to that over <laughs> there. Uh, we may find out something f uh, more about Preston Zimmerman and his thoughts on this. I, I I don't know. We this is really really sticky stuff, and I and I wrote about this. 
uh, this topic of Americanness in 2010, before we had this wave of Germans coming in, before we had uh, Danny Williams, and before we had uh, why am I blanking on on everybody right now? But uh, Terrence Boyd Fabian coming Johnson. up, and Fabian Johnson, and Jermaine Jones, and and all of these guys. Okay, before any of that happened, when it was just actually when it was just Jermaine Jones being introduced, I, I you know I think it's really it's it depends on on how you view um the the whole international soccer thing to begin with if you have some high ideal about when international soccer is supposed to be and everybody's wearing their hearts on their sleeves and playing for the flag and they bleed red white and blue you're just never going to be happy with it because that's not the reality of the situation well, qatar is bringing has, in brazilians has, and and germany has turkish players and, and that's which is all fine in my mind i'm perfectly comfortable with it but for anybody who doesn't who doesn't buy that that Terrence Boyd or Dwayne Jones or Fabian Johnson or Danny Williams can be American? Uh, you're just not. This isn't going to be your I team. I don't think it's an issue of these guys whether they're American or not. I don't think we'd even be talking about it if the influx wasn't so large and so immediate following Klinsman's uh, hire. Okay. Because we've been open to players coming in and, and putting on the U.S. shirt before. Hey, we're a nation of immigrants, right. well, for God's we, sake. We, we, we obviously it, brought up Thomas Dooley. We obviously brought up Thomas Dooley, and there's Ernie Stewart, and, and David David Regie is a different thing, by the way. That that doesn't fall yeah, that into the same. that was a gun same. for hire. That was that, a straight-up gun for hire. Yeah, and that one bothers me, because that's not, that's not okay— you know, he, he had an American father, and maybe they didn't have a relationship, and maybe he hasn't been here. He had an American he, wife. He, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, you're not listening. What I'm saying is Regie was different. He wasn't Jermaine Jones. Oh, okay. He wasn't Fabian Johnson in that way. His thing was he had an American wife, and they brought him in because they thought, you know, he could help at that, at that moment, and, it, and it, it, it didn't work. It wasn't a good idea. It, these guys, I, I, I can't look into the heads of these players and decide, you know, and, and determine whether or not they feel American, whether they feel a connection. Maybe they're working on their English and it's just not coming. I mean, that's one of the things that, that, that Zimmerman said that I think bothered people a lot. Here's, here's the series of tweets, because I'm not sure everybody's caught up. It's long. Do you want to read them all? or should, I'll, I'll pick and choose here. Just um, run through them, dude. All right, let's see. Uh, I thought it would be cool getting Klinsman as U.S. national team coach, but I think it's actually worse than when Bradley was coach. Requirements to get on U.S. national team under Klinsman. Be a fake American. Okay, that's... That, <laughs> that's rough. That's rough. That's rough. Be born outside the U.S., have one U.S. distant relative, which is not true. None of these guys have distant American relatives. They wouldn't be eligible. They wouldn't be eligible if they had one distant relative. Uh, Zimmerman again. I see the team is calling in guys who are really Germans who know they've got no chance playing for Germany, so they'll settle with the U.S. Look, that's probably true in some cases. We know it's true in Jermaine Jones' case. He probably wouldn't be in a, a U.S. international if it wasn't for the fact that he couldn't cut it for Germany. Okay? But the reality just, of it is— I just came up with a great show for TV, though, where Preston Zimmerman is the Glenn Beck of U.S. soccer. <laughs> and he got his own show with a big blackboard. And he traces the lineage on his blackboard. It, it, like It's all about like He's how like, America is so, failing so, and who's responsible <laughs> for it. Preston, Preston Zimmerman on the radio asking for the uh, birth certificates of all of these players. He's crying because he loves the, the flag so much. Look, look okay. First, it, it's not necessarily true that every German-American player doesn't feel a little German and a little American. They don't have. It's not one or the other. They don't. They're not picking a side. These guys aren't going. Well, I'm. I, you know, I was born in Germany. I, I grew up in Germany. I play soccer in Germany. I'm only German. Oh, look. Here's a, a team that that wants me. When Germany doesn't, I'll go play for them. Some of these guys are probably have in their younger lives as they were growing up fought with a lot of different demons over the fact that they were half American what over the fact that maybe their dad wasn't around or whatever the situation was I mean it's case by case some of these guys probably did have some issues with their Americanness but I, I'm not I don't I can't judge how they feel about it because uh, uh, you know as far as I know they want to be here and I think that's, Listen, that's re it. renouncing your citizenship isn't prerequisite for playing for, no, for exactly. a team. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to be. It's part of the culture here anyway. I don't understand necessarily yeah. the 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 phobia of these players. I understand saying that maybe perhaps by bringing dual nationality people in, you you maybe deprive the spot of building a American team that no matter what will be there. I understand because these guys yeah. could go off and play for Germany. Yeah. We've had that discussion on the show before, and right. I understand that talking point. But to say discount a person merely because you have the the veiled uh, perception that they're not 
American enough. That's the part that's weird. It, it's, the, the it's, American it's, enough. The problem is that, that everything beyond citizenship is an arbitrary standard. That That's the problem. Everything beyond is he a citizen is arbitrary. It, it depends on the person, whether or not they want to say, well, if you don't speak English, you're not American enough. Or if you've never been to the country, you're not American enough. Or... You know, I don't know if you don't know who our first president was. I mean, just pick something and that and decide from that. I mean, this is there is a, a nativist movement across Europe that's pretty ugly right now. That has a lot. A lot of this is it goes back to this idea of uh, you can't we can't accept people for coming, you know, that, that want to be here. And, and in whatever way, whether they want to join the military, whether they want to play soccer for the U.S., it doesn't really matter. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm fine with all of it. Obviously, Preston Zimmerman is not. And this is the here's here's a couple more that I think are, are pertinent here. Uh, that's embarrassing when a good friend of mine says he met one of the guys at the airport and he couldn't reply back in English as a U.S. international player, U.S. national player. I'm guessing this is one of the the U-23 German guys that was in the camp. I, I don't think that's embarrassing. Are you expecting him to? That speak? means we're finally catching up for the rest of the world. Guess that uh, these are issues the rest of the world, the big international well, okay. teams, have to deal with all the time. Here's a question for Preston Zimmerman: If it was um, a Mexican uh, kid who was who had an American parent and grew up in Mexico, played uh, played Mexican soccer, and decided he wanted to play for the U.S. and had never spoken English and was learning English and he couldn't respond in English, would it be the same attitude? Would it would it be the same? I'm just asking. Would he have the same I problem? I have a feeling that he may be the. Here's here's the thing that makes it so iffy is that he obviously calls out the prerequisite as being Jurgen Klinsmann's prerequisite, which right. means that right. he's German leaning. I don't think necessarily think his issue so much would be with the American, American uh, Mexican player, which okay. would make him a hypocrite if not though. Okay, yes, I understand you can draw a line between German, Jurgen Klinsmann, German, and these players, but it's not like Bob Bradley wasn't reaching into this pool and pulling out a couple of guys before Jurgen Klinsmann showed up. Timothy Chandler was this, his guy. Jermaine Timmy Chandler Jones was his guy. Jermaine Jones, these there are guys that were in the mix when Bob Bradley was around because this is a this is a resource to be I don't want to say exploited but to be used if it's available and if these guys want to play for the U.S. I don't know whose decision it is I don't know well, whose right it is to say that they can't unless here's a you, different talking point for you. Is it almost insulting that Christian Zimmerman calls these guys out when every one, almost every one of them is the product of a serviceman military parent? I don't know that that has anything to do with it necessarily. These are their parents are people that obviously put their life on the line well, for I mean, this country. Yeah, okay, but patriotism isn't something that it's not. It's That's not exactly in the blood. That's exactly what he's kind of talking about. Well, but about. it's not in the blood. It's it's it, yeah. Okay, I I. I I don't think that you're that's really you're the son of a of a serviceman father, and you take very much pride in that, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, sure. I, I, so, I, what's to say that these kids can't do the same thing? No, they they probably do, and that's part of the, the the things that I'm sure they all went through. Some of them probably had an easier time with it than others, depending on their family uh, their family situations. Uh, the other things that he that Zimmerman said here here's the here's the, the the towards the end of it talking about results. If Clinton was winning and very successful with his approach, then my words would carry no weight. But I don't see any success. Squeaking out one nothing wins against Concacaf villages isn't success. I like that. No, I, I do okay. like that. Yeah, but uh, that's that's crude and dismissive and wrong. First of all, and that's second why of all, I like it. Okay, fine. It, it it tickles you somewhere, but it's not a nice thing to say. It is not correct either. And Zimmerman sells himself out. He basically says, if we were winning, it wouldn't matter. That I, you know, basically he comes off as a as a spoiled fan or a uh, a, I don't know, a fan with expectations, entitled? an entitled fan who thinks that if you okay, it doesn't. Okay, so winning solves a lot of problems. If people, some people might have a problem with the Germanness of this team, but if we won, they wouldn't say anything. Then you're a hypocrite. I'm sorry, you're a hypocrite. If Pepper, if Preston Zimmerman wouldn't say the same exact thing if the U.S. wins the World Cup, then he's a hypocrite. I, I don't know. No, you're right. It's a stance. It that's why it's, <laughs> the take a bold stance like this. On one hand, kind of tip my hat to him because he went out on a limb and said what a lot of I think a lot of people actually do think. A part of this to be true maybe not to the extent that he's saying but I do believe he's speaking for a lot of people my issue on this is not necessarily related to real Americans or fake Americans or whatever labels Preston Zimmerman wants to apply to these guys my issue is more about the health of US soccer and developing players and I and I have brought it up on this show or maybe it was on the previous show if you are giving opportunities to to kids that grew up playing soccer in Germany are you missing out on on something here in the states? We've talked about that. I think that's a pertinent point to be made. 
And I think you could argue that if you're giving Terrence Boyd, who was a reservist in Germany, a shot over an MLS player, then, you know, there might be a question to be asked there. That's all. Does Camp Strudel buck the trend that Preston Zerman's talking about in this no. when he complains about no, the no. U23 camp in Germany right. by bringing in – Germany's going to be shut down for the winter for a little bit here. No, but German players could have been called into this camp, and they weren't. No, but but this is Klinsman taking the opportunity to see guys he didn't have a chance to see otherwise. And none of these – So which, you know, very which few of these to me guys. means that you should take with a grain of salt the under-23 camp in Germany because that was for the same thing over there. Okay, but there was a You're lot of – You're looking at two different talent pools in two different geographic right. locations, Look, and that's the, why I'm – okay with it the, 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 it it's it's happenstance in my mind that the u.s has a bunch of german american kids playing in, and growing up in germany who are eligible for the united states and we just signed a german american co- or german coach that's just that's a coincidence more than anything else it, it it helps getting those kids to to uh to come over here maybe if you're in Clinton can pat them on the on the back and say something uh, but I, I it's just a coincidence the fact that the u.s had a a heavy military presence in germany and out of that came a bunch of kids who are are eligible. That's, that's just, you know, that has nothing to do with Jurgen Klinsmann. It's, it's very similar to what we go through in the U.S. with Mexico. There's a lot of Mexican internationals that came to the U.S. for a better life and had kids here and now have an allegiance or an ability to play for Mexico. It's the same thing going the other direction. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we will we'll close out this episode of the Best Soccer Show, North American Soccer Network. NASN.TV, don't go anywhere, guys. Uh, Hold on. Back to close out the best soccer show live Wednesday, December 28th, because I know it now. Jason and Jared... Uh, a couple of things to clean up here. News and notes of the week. You know, I, I said nothing's really happening, but that's that's not true. It just depends on what you decide is important. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Clint Dempsey does an interview with Fox Soccer, and, and, you know, it was fine. It was a lot of, you know, family, and, you know, we all know about Deuce and the sacrifices his family has made, and, and he lost his sister uh, when he was a, a teenager or however old he was in Texas. And all of those things. But one thing that, that Dempsey said that, st- that struck me is, you know, I, I don't think it's ever been a secret he wants to, to move up and play at a higher level. But he mentions Champion League, Champions League soccer, and that's not going to happen with Fulham. And I'm yeah, just wondering. Yeah, tipping his cards a bit. When is, it, when is this move coming? I mean, he's 28. Well, they, he's at the top they, of his the game. The question was, where do you see yourself in five years? What do you want to have accomplished in five years, I believe, is how the question was, uh, was posed to him. And one of the things, one of the first things he said was play Champions League football. And like you right. said, he's not going to get that at Fulham. Dude. And with the Arsenal links that came through the summer, uh, Arsenal obviously looking to make some moves again here in the January window, is that a player, first of all, is not going to break the bank Dempsey, no. you'll get good money for him, but he's not going to break the bank in any way. Yeah, they've sold. Uh, he, they, they, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They sold. I mean, they, they sold uh, Samir Nasri. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they brought in Arteta. But Dempsey is a player that probably well, is within their financial wheelhouse. Right. There, right? Are, there are a couple of possibilities. I mean, I I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that any any of the quote unquote big four teams outside of United could be interested in Clint Dempsey on some significant level. And then, you you know, he's not going to City, obviously. So those, you know, the, the Arsenals, the Liverpools, the, um, uh, who am I missing, Chelsea. So those are all possibilities. I mean, I, I don't think it's completely uh, insane to think he could leave England. I don't think that's likely. I mean, I, he's, he's pretty much settled there and the I've league knows him. I've always wanted to see Deuce play in La Liga, but uh, I don't yeah, know if that's, that's going to happen. That's but not happening. His family's family settled already in London. You have two of those teams you just mentioned already in London as well. I mean, he wouldn't have to go far. It wouldn't be much of a right. change of lifestyle. But the question is, is now the time? Is he finally ready to not just be a player on these teams, but a starter for any one of those teams? Right. I, mean, I think I, I, I don't. You know, I I think it's time for him to make that move. And when is he going to be more primed for it? And I don't think I don't know if Every, it's January. He's gone. He's Go ahead. Everywhere he's gone, he's earned his yeah. spot. I don't know if who's to say he can't do it somewhere else. I don't know if it's January. I don't think it's happening in January, but the the summer is rapidly approaching, so uh, it could be a lot of different possibilities there. By the way, Clint Dempsey's still the coolest American soccer player. The the interview. I mean, the guy just doesn't. Gooch is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, but Gooch is like 
badass cool whereas yeah Clint's, yeah, yeah, Clint's yeah. is kind of like yeah I, you know this it, it doesn't nothing seems to to i don't know Dempsey's kinda, a, is dempsey kind of lando calrissian cool uh well i don't know lando is kind of a boisterous dude and clint's not boisterous but i know, but you know clint's got the right name he is more of a clint eastwood kind of cool huh? i guess that's what it is i guess that's what it is uh a couple other news and notes Rangers lost the old firm Darby. I don't really care much about that except for the Americans that played. I guess Boca Negra played 90 and Adu made a, an appearance. Side. Yeah, something like that. And then uh, uh, Charlie Davies goes back to so sh- so show. So show. So that uh, it doesn't look like he's coming back to MLS, another team. I that don't was know the what worst he... possible conclusion to that deal, you right? Think? That if no one, if no one bit. He would go back to Sasha, right? I, you don't get the feeling they really want him back. No, I don't. I don't really. Well, okay, they may. I don't know. They may want him in terms of just being able to control him in some way, but I'm sure they don't want to be paying a salary for him to sit on the bench. And I don't, you know, from what I've seen, I don't think he's ready to play league on soccer. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting ride for him. And and as mentioned uh, by our producer here, Craig, uh, Greg Seltzer at no short corners dropped a a little nugget that, that Charlie may have turned something down in Mexico. Which you know like we talked about Eddie Johnson down there trying to revive his career. I don't think that would be a bad place for Charlie Davies to go. I don't know why he would turn that down if it was a, a decent. It would be funny if you found out that Puebla was the team he turned down. Eddie Johnson and then picked they up went, that deal, and then they went for Eddie Johnson. That'd be interesting. All right, is, so is that an insult to Eddie Johnson if uh, if they, if he's the the second man up to Charlie Davies behind the guy that that almost died in a car accident and had to be yeah. rebuilt from the ground up? Maybe yeah. <laughs> it might be a bit of an insult to Eddie Johnson. All right, let's uh, let's thank Alexi Lawless for coming on the show uh, and, and uh, finally making an appearance on the Best Soccer Show. Anything else we need to let the people know about before I do all of the uh, the plugging? Once again, we got a holiday weekend coming up, so no show on Sunday. We're looking right. to go live again next week on Wednesday, but to make it up to you tomorrow, we'll release our interview with Jeff Cameron. And this show will be available for uh, for download as well. So you'll have the the live Wednesday podcast, the podcast of the live when, live Wednesday Wednesday show. Wow. And Jeff Cameron, please go to iTunes and sign up. Even if you don't use iTunes or use an iPod, just sign up. I mean, just, you know, subscribe to it. Make it happen for us. Leave us a, a rating and a review. It takes you, a, you know, the review can be great show. Give me two words. That's enough. Okay. Tell us if you'd rather have Young Guns or Robin Hood. Yeah, give us give us your vote for the poll or the bodyguard <laughs> or the bodyguard. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye.